so good morning again. Um, in this talk, I'm going to present a bit more about what, what, what I'm working for the next version, the upcoming release on next flow, the next feature, the new feature, etc. The most important changes. And uh, also, before I start, I would, li I would like to apologize a bit uh, on the fact that I am much less active in the community channel only because there is so many people now that become very difficult for me to follow everybody. So uh, I'm fully a bit less, but the nice thing of it is that th there is much more people engaging each other. So finally, we are a real community. It isn't anymore just me replying to everybody, but there are a lot of people interact each, each, uh, be between them. So it's great, this. And uh, so a few numbers about the project. It's going very well. Our paper that we published in 2017 got a lot of citation, 130% compared to the past year, so it's a high, highly cited paper. And also in the GitHub repository, there are 80, 170 stars. There's a lot of works, a lot of people on Gitter, like I was mentioning. Also, the code base is becoming more and more bigger. This is continuing to, to, to grow. We are over 100,000 lines of code. Quite, 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 quite good. It's not an enormous project, but there is a lot, a lot of work. And um, yeah, these are the the interaction, the tickets on, on GitHub. They continue to to grow. There are not just issues. There is also a lot of question. Uh, most of them are closed, but also some of them <laughs> are still open. But there is a lot of work to yeah. We expect us in the future. Uh, and even more interesting, then there are more pull requests. I'm very happy about that. More people start to contribute in the source code of the project on specific feature. Uh, so it's really, really a real open source project with many contribution, different part. Also, the, the, the growth of the project is reflecting the number of downloads continues to grow. Now we are something uh, around 20,000 downloads per month on average with big peak. And it doubled compared to the past year, so it's quite good, encouraging. And then there, then there are new stable contributors. Uh, they, each of them work in different and different area. Uh, this guy contributed the support for Git. It is an alternative platform for GitHub. It's quite, quite nice. We had this guy from One Codex. They contributed some support for AWS profiles and the security tokens. Philip, you made a fantastic contribution for the metrics. There were there were some bugs in the the metrics uh, created by Nextflow. He found out the problem and also submitted some some very useful uh, pull requests. Dimitri Ankapizarro made a contribution for AWS, and then there is also this guy very, very, very active in the community. Uh, I'm very appreciating that. And also, there is Liz Lee is contributing a lot on the support for Google pipelines. So the number of people working in different area is great. So let's start to see something more about what we are going to how we are going to enhance the language to support more complicated advanced use cases, bigger pipeline, etc. The, the work was mostly focused on the language, but there are a number of changes also about the platform. So for uh, AWS Batch, for example, now there is the ability to have custom mount, mount points for containers. Uh, so in your configuration file, you can have mount separate ABS volumes or uh, separate file system. And they make the, the ability to create your pipeline more flexible. Also, there is the ability to specify the job role around. It's an extra security, which was a contribution by uh, Sam. I refined some things, but the main thing was made by you. Thank you. And recently, also, I've added the support for GPU accelerator. Here, there is 
Uh, next row level, there is little. There is just ability to specify the accelerator in the directive of the, of the task, and that is passed to the API or AWS batch. And then there are other, other small features like the ability to use temporary session tokens, AWS profile other than the default. Also, an important improvement was about uh, the S3 data transfer. There were some, some bugs there. There was some cancer realization, and the throughput was quite bad. And now it is much faster. And this is just a slide to show in practice how does it work, the, this new feature of some of them. Uh, it changed in this version also the, the the option that we used to specify the path of the AWS client before it was the, the into the executor, um, but now it's supposed to be specified here into the batch scope to have something more homogeneous in which we have all the, the option for AWS batch. So there is the clip part, the volumes, this is, is specifying two mounts, the mount for TMP in the host is mapped into TMP, into the container. This is instead an extended syntax that is the usual Docker syntax in which you say that the host part is mounted in this part into the container, eventually also specify read-only attributes. So there is this uh, list that allows you to <coughs> declare ex extra mounts into the container. And finally, this is the job role that I was mentioning before, just an extra uh, way to define uh, Amazon credential for your uh, uh, batch task. This is the directive to specify the, CPU, uh, the GPU accelerator and the number of GPU that you want to use. So there is not, not so much to do. And then batch will try to allocate the, the, the job using that kind of API. What's next? Uh, I think the most important thing would be to allow uh, the ability to have uh, the capacity to use a real uh, file system like last three when we run AWS batch workload, not just use S3. This, I think, would be a great improvement for, for the tool. And uh, ideally, I would like to remove the need to create a custom AMI, AMI to run this uh, this, uh, this job because it is quite complicated. Uh, would be much much simpler just using any AMI to run this task. And um, also there were some enhancements for Google pipelines. Uh, this is a much newer executor compared to AWS batch. Uh, <coughs> and there is a lot of people using it. Not like a uh, batch, but uh, it's taking more visibility. And a nice feature that it has this, uh, this executor is the ability to create dynamic virtual, virtual machine type in the meaning that you don't have to specify the type of the machine, but you can just say, okay, I want this number of CPU, this amount of memory, and then the platform create the, the instance for you. And so also in the, in the latest release, there is support for the disk resources. You specify how much search you want and automatically the, 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 the platform attach the required uh, volume. Also for Google Pipelines, they, they support for the accelerator. And another important platform that is becoming more and more important is Kubernetes. Uh, this platform is maturing along the entire, so also here there is more people using it, adopting. There are the, the, the guys who are pushing as good or maybe the, 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 the main one using it, they are doing interesting things. Actually, there is one guy is contributing a lot of things in, the, in, the, in, in this platform, all of her. And uh, yeah, that a lot of feature, the support for node selector, uh, the support for uh, Kubernetes annotation, also a lot of bug fixes, so I'm very happy about that. So I think it's still a bit complicated to use this technology but uh, it's promising. I think the next year we, we can see something more interesting. There are some uh, changes, small changes in other, in other area. There, there is a new executor for Moab that is okay, a variation for PBS batch scheduler, more or less, from the adaptive computing. 
Uh, recently, another guy submitted the, the support for Shifter. This is an alternative continuous runtime uh, for HPC. I never used. Some people say that it is good. I have no direct experience, so I don't know what to, how to comment about that. But it's an alternative. This is important to add. And then, let's see the most important part, what we are going to modify in the language next to <coughs> your language feature. So, um, well, first small change is this declaration. So far, when we have to declare an input and output that have more than one company, we use this set. But this set was a mistake. This is not a real set. It's really confusing. Because the idea was, OK, this is a set of elements. But yeah, everybody reads like a verb. But it's not like a noun, including me. So finally, <laughs> yeah, after five years. <laughs> so at the end, now we are go going to change this set into tuple. This is just syntax sugar. There is no impact in the pipeline. Just search to replace. Uh, a bit more readable. <laughs> not so convinced. And um, OK, so nothing so dramatic. Another change inside is this declaration, the file. So now it starts to be a bit more scary the thing. So far now, we have to say when we have file, multiple file, this, this file data type. And the idea is to change to path. Why to change to path? Uh, this is not just a stylistic change. There is, there is the, a, a problem. The problem is that when we have an input file, for example, like this, when the, the input file came from an upstream process, there is no problem. But most, most, in some cases, not in some cases, when the file, the input file came, is the first process, uh, you have to declare this input, you generally have a parameter, and then you need to use a built-in function file to convert the string to a file object. And then you have to pass this another time to the file. So this is a bit weird. So you should write something like, in some cases, you write something like file from file. Why? This is very confusing. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yeah, there are a lot of mistakes at the beginning. And uh, because at the end, this is a built-in function, instead this is a type. Oh. And the idea now is to, 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 to fix the, the, this problem, we re removing this need, so we can just say path from a string value. And the tool, the next tool automatically infer, OK, this is a path I automatically convert to, to a file. You don't have any more to convert manually. And simplify these steps, but this is super useful when you have to ingest files from files. When you have a, TS, a CSV file, a YAM file, and you want to uh, provide all these things to the pipeline, you don't have to manipulate all the, 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 the input file uh, manually. And uh, this is for the input path. And then there is also what's, what are the changes, the benefit for the output path. The output path allows you to declare, to control in a more granular manner, what you can do, what files you want to capture in the output definition. So there is a, by default, you can just say, like before, path something. But now you can even specify the type or the file or the directory that you want to capture. Maybe if you want to capture the same links or if you don't want to capture the same links because by default they are resolved to the darkest file, but there are some tools some situation in which the task create a sim link and you don't want to resolve the, the same link, but you want to take the file that represents the same link. There are many possible situations. This option allows you to better control what you want to capture in the output task. So the bottom line, here the problem is just to replace file with part. It's not complicated. And this is a very common request. Optional input to output? Uh, not yet, but, but, but 
but the idea of this uh, option, uh, this option in the in the path is to give the ability also to declare for each output if it is output, uh, if it is optional or not. Or maybe we could uh, add an extra option that allows to, de to declare the arity of the files that you want to capture. So there is something that needs to be defined. The, 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 the point is that it will be possible to implement using this path component in the uh, upcoming releases. And now, the, 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 the most important stuff. How is changing the syntax to declare process components? Uh, here the problem was, okay, at the beginning the idea was, okay, let's try to compose a pipeline, put it together different tasks. I want to keep this simple and using the declarative data flow programming model in which you link the task with this data structure that are the channels. So this makes it really straightforward to combine together different tasks, just establishing the dependency, just saying that the output this is linked to the downstream task by this, uh, by this channel. So this made easy the composition of the pipeline, but at the same time made it impossible to reuse these pieces in different parts because they are all worked together. And it worked nice a small pipeline, but more the project became big, more people want to add complexity and different tasks. And then, yes, it, it can be complicated to read a pipeline like this when you have 20 processes. It's easy to modify, to add something, but it's complicated to maybe to, to understand, to read all the flow that there is in your, in your analysis. So how to change this to make this component reusable without breaking above all, whatever we implement so far, because this is also, also another pro uh, point. We don't want to break uh, all the pipelines in F-Core. That would be a disaster. And the idea was just this. Let's remove this declaration. So the new syntax you just say, process, input, process, and the output, and the command. You don't declare any more from where is coming the data, where it is outputting the results. But in removing this, we, we lose the ability to, to work the, 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 the task together. How we define the dependency between the task? We are going to define these dependencies with a new scope that is workflow. So you have the task, you declare this task, what they are supposed to run, execute, and the, 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 the input that they receive, the output that they produce. And now, we uh, just use these processes, these tasks like function invocation, in which we pass the input channel like they, they, they are argument on the function. It's very straightforward. And the really nice thing that after I use this, the process full, I can reference the output in the following invocation. So I have another task that take the output, the upstream task. And this makes much more readable the code that you are going to write. Imagine that you have a big pipeline, and you see immediately, okay, I'm running this, and then I take the output from that, I'm put, putting this output into the, another task, much more readable. And to enable this, now you have to specify this line on the on top of your pipeline, extra preview DSL. Uh, preview because it is a uh, feature uh, under development, and so likely we uh, remove the preview thing, but we remain a flag to enable this syntax because for some time we want to maintain the ability to run also the legacy syntax. So this will be the ability to enable the new syntax and reuse these processes and combine it together in this way. What about multiple inputs and multiple outputs? Uh, like uh, we do now, we can't declare 
uh, multiple output may be using uh, the tuple definition that what we call now set. And, and this makes sense when you, you have uh, an output that captures uh, logical entity and keeping together, but still we are using a single output channel. But there are situations in which you want to produce multiple output channels from the same task. So how to reference this into the downstream processes? And the idea is just to use this array syntax that you are allowed, you can say, okay, I want to take the first output of the full task and pass to, this, uh, to, the, to the bar, or I want to take the second one, etc. And um, also there is an, another, another possibility there was, and the is missing. <laughs> I should say, okay, but I want to use name. Okay, let's use name. So to define the name on the output, we can use Emmet. Emmet allows me to declare the name of the output that I'm, uh, uh, I'm, de I'm defining in, in, the, in the task, and then we, I will be able to reference this name here. It is make more clear, allows you to write more semantic code, more semantic uh, task definition. This is the best one, channel out of working. So far when we have two processes that want to reuse the same input channel, we have to use this into stuff to duplicate the channel so that can be used in multiple places. <coughs> and this is ugly, it's extremely boring. But there were limitations in the previous implementation that made, made, it, made it impossible to allow to reuse a channel in multiple places. But finally, also because now we have this scope that allows to uh, separate the definition of the pipeline, now it is possible to infer the complete dependencies between all the tasks and the input between them, so it is possible to determine what are the, the required forking into the network uh, that, that there is beyond uh, organizing the data flow of the pipeline. So now you can just take a channel and reuse as many times as you want. Next flow, we create the, the, the forking automatically. And this is obviously is valid also for the output of a task. In this case, you can use, we are invoking a process, this process re returning uh, an output channel, and you will be able to use in more places like any other channel. Much, much simpler. Okay, this is blinking. And finally, the models. This has been a long awaited feature next to everybody was, I want to use this. This, part, this process is another pipeline, how we, how we can do. I think the first guy asking this was Jose, years ago, when Nextflow was still a small project in the lab, I said, oh, but models are not needed, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> but instead, so it turns out that are an important, an important feature, so how to create a model? So now that we don't have any more we are not declaring any more dependencies in the process definition, we can just take this piece and put it into a separate file, and we can use include from. And you include the processes into the main pipeline. And it, you can reuse them, the, you can define the workflow like before. So this is quite easy. Obviously there are more more, more, more option because uh, in the reality is always more complicated, and maybe you want to include just one task from a module, and you can say include name of the task from. And this is also maybe the, the, the a suggested way because it allows you to understand from where is coming a task. Otherwise, we have you start to 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 use all these tasks, but you don't know where they are. In this way, you can say explicitly, okay, this is coming from this file, this came from the other file. And uh, of course then there is a situation, there are two models with the same task name. And we have the possibility to say include full as, so you declare an alias for that task when you are including and you can use the alias 
uh, to, to, to invoke them. And you can even use the alias for the same task in the same, uh, in the same model. So you can just rename a use in your script with another name. And we are processing invocation, but then could not we have sub workflow? So processes the code, uh, workflow that could process it and use them like a reusable piece of code. Of course we can. So the trick is just to use this workflow, give it a name. This is the, 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 the full definition without a name, that is the entry point. But we can also create workflow, give it a name, put, create the logic in this piece of workflow, how they, they interact with each other, and then we have the main workflow that reuse that piece of the workflow. And obviously then you can nest workflow into some workflow. <coughs> There's no, no limitation on your fantasy at that point. Yeah, workflow one, they invoke process A, B, the workflow two, they invoke process C, and workflow one. And then there is the main workflow, they call the second one. <coughs> and then I want to create a model of workflow. And that is no difference. You can take that piece of code you put on Sophie, and then you can include not just the process, but you can include the complete workflow into the main one. The interesting thing is that, okay, we show in the, in the tutorial, we show more in practice, otherwise it became too complicated to, to explain. Uh, but the important fact is that you can isolate not just task, but piece of logic. So aggregation of task, uh, just reuse them. Can you, can you imagine like a command line argument that you're gonna, that you're gonna put into the next flow run and then you're gonna specify which workflow you run? Yes, it's minus entry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed, because exactly by default, what is happening is that when you run your, your script, it executes this, the workflow without a name. But there is going to be an option, minus entry, entry point, that allows you to, 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 to choose which entry workflow you want to execute. So by default, we use this one, but you can make your pipeline to start from this one or the other one. And um, since the workflow now is a piece that we can reuse, we want to pass data to this, to the, uh, uh, to this component. And um, to specify the input data of a sub workflow, we use the, the definition. It is similar to what we are doing in the process in which there is input. Here, there is get. It's a bit different because there you have to specify if it is a file, if there is a tuple, whatever. Here we are just getting channels. So we need just to, to, to give to the input channel a name that we can reference then into the, the, the body of, of the workflow implementation. So when you declare one or more input, you need to specify other than that, you need to specify main to declare where the body is starting and then you create your workflow. And then, like before, you can invoke this, passing the, the data channel. And if we have input, we have also output. And how to declare the output of a workflow using Amit. So here we can define one more output that is produced this guy. And, um, and you have to specify which is the channel that is produced, that is emitted by the workflow. And then you will be able to use like a process. The, this sub-workflow is emitting this output channel that is the result of the bar invocation, the bar task, and then we can, re, we can use like process and we can take the output and here just dump in the output. Of course, you can have many output channel, you will be able to use the, oh no, there is an example later, yes, like in this case, 
this case I'm using is using the assigned syntax to give the Apu channel a name. So you can do uh, using this approach to, to, to give the Apu channel a name that you can reuse in this way. Hello. Yep. Could you say channel um, channel two equals bar, and then brackets, and then just emit channel two? Um, <coughs> likely. I'm not sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but it would be better to, to avoid any case because I think it would be better to separate the, the execution uh, from the declaration of the output. But in principle, it should be possible because t this stuff, yes, is evaluating an expression that includes the, the execution of a task. Okay, this is from the workflow output. And then we back to the problem. Okay, well, with next flow we don't have. We have a separate concept for the output from the, the published output. The meaning that uh, we consider everything that is computed by the task and now also the workflow like a, a scratch output. Instead, then we want to separate instead what is supposed to be the final pipeline execution output. And so far, we use this published directive in the task to say, okay, I want the output this task to put there, etc. And since now, what is the problem? Now, we are separating the definition of the task into modules. So make no sense anymore to, to put this rule inside a common module. And the idea is to, to move this concept out from the task definition and declare a start at the workflow level. So you have your, all your tasks, maybe you have also your sub workflow, and then you aggregate all these into the final pipeline in which then declare what your pipeline is creating, is publishing the real output of the pipeline. So this is a concept that is um, this is going to be moved outside in the main pipeline, in the main workflow declaration. This is going to be a published uh, definition which you list, okay, uh, this task is producing something I want to copy here. This other task is producing something else I want to put here. And this is, behind the scene, it's got to be the same implementation of published there, and it, there are even the same option. But then now it is moving at this level. And you can put this only in the main workflow, not in a sub workflow, for the same process for the tasks. Okay. Yeah. What if I need to save the output of the process and name in a directory and name the directory with a variable value that I have in the process? Can I use a closure or something like that? Yes. Yeah. yeah, here there is say, say Vasa as before and uh, yes, now there is say Vasa like in, there is a, in the published year. I was thinking maybe if it's possible to make something in the tube, but I don't know, we, maybe we can try to think a bit more about this. Okay, yeah, not can finished. You, can we get optional <laughs> Optional, and you put an if. <laughs> now it's much easier. <laughs> yeah. You can say, okay, if something is this, or the y is the other. Other question? <laughs> yes. This way you can allow four loops, no? Because before four loops were not allowed. Ha! 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 This is function, not programming, isn't it? There is no for each. No, yeah, yeah. The problem is, okay, I didn't tell this, but now I have to tell. You cannot use this more than once. So you can, you cannot use a process or, or flow, you cannot invoke more than once. But you can invoke, no? Huh? Um, 
the real reason that you can't is for just for a naming, uh, a naming problem. They mean that since we are using this name to reference the execution of this, if we invoke more than one, this name, what is it going to reference? Yeah. Why do you use foo dot out and not, you know, output of foo equals foo bracket? Uh, an assignment. Yeah. You can. You could run it. This output. Oh, where, where? More. So instead of doing foo dot out, could you do an assignment in the main? Mm, yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then you could you could loop. Yeah. I, I, we are going to see a bit more in practice this in the tutorial later. Let me see. Okay, this time. Oh no, not at all. Uh, but just to close, yeah. Um, so the, the problem of invoking one more than one time is a problem on, on naming. Um, and above all, I, I didn't want to do to 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 prevent the ability to make four. Be, for because it should be more a uh, function oriented approach. But still an open question. So maybe if we find a way we could or even add the ability to invoke a process more than one time, so use also for. So it's an open an open point, let's say this. Um, how would you do software dependency management now with modules? So imagine uh -huh. you have third party modules lying somewhere or a registry or whatsoever. Does not change anything. Okay. Oh, okay. But this is the, the point of. You, you, you won't find the executable locally in your system because this person has to find it in his next row config or whatsoever. But if you're including the NF file, you have no clue what the software behind is necessary. But how does it change compared to now? So I think the question is more around would you have like a config for every single one of your modules? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it is. Not just the conflict, but you can imagine that you have the... It is in the, in the things to finish later, yeah. <laughs> so, but, yeah, I, I will try to respond more in a better way in the tutorial part about this. So we'll have more time, otherwise we are r running out of time. Yeah. I want just to show a few things. There is still something uh, completely new, because so, so, in some, 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 some way, this was just an evolutionary of the syntax. But, and when I started to implement this stuff, uh, it turns out that I realized the possibility to do something that is incredible, in the meaning that you can even use pipe to compose tasks like this. So, you have a process, and then your workflow, what is doing? It's creating a channel, is piping. The, the channel to the task foo, and then I can even mix map, the map operator, and then, oops, and then I can even mix the other operator, so you can compose, like in bash, the task execution. This is a complete new way to, to write the pipeline, still not so sure, in the, the previous syntax I'm quite, I'm quite sure on the result, um, I consider uh, nearly stable. This is very experimental, uh, it's surprising me about the ability that you allows you to, to write your pipeline. Also, at the same time, a bit, a bit scared by the flexibility. There is a, a bit too magic behind. So let's see if we, we include in the final, final version. But what you can do is surprising. And um, for example, you, have, you can have two tasks like this, and then your workflow like before. There is the channel, then there is the operator map. You can even put pipe two processes, like this case, and you are saying that this output is given to the full and bar that are executed in parallel. And then you can take the output of these two, you mix together, and then you print. So you can do very advanced things in a few characters. Maybe now the problem is that you cannot write all the pipeline into one line, but you can even split this using this syntax uh, it is quite fun, I find. <laughs> <laughs> and the problem is maybe it's too fun. Let's see if it's really useful. So this is an experimental feature. And, uh, oh my god, oh, too many things. Okay, this is, I just mentioned that we will show later. 
these new two new operators. One is branch that allows you to create this is a, 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 to create new channels using this syntax. There is a channel, there is a branch. Then you use a, a tag, which you put a name of the target channel that you want to create and an expression that need to be evaluated. So when this expression evaluates evaluate to true, the stuff is sent to the small channel. Otherwise, go into the large channel. So this way, you create two channels from one. And there is another possibility to capture everything, like in this case, you just put a, a condition that is always true and capture everything that is not satisfying the previous, uh, the previous condition. Then there is also a new fork operator that is uh, replaced the, the separate. And what it's doing is create a copy of the channel, remapping the value to a new values. But we'll see later in the tutorial what is as well. And this is okay, variation. So toward the conclusion, there are also some deprecation set become tuple into we don't need any more choice is not supposed to be used anymore because it's replaced by branch, separate is replaced by four. <coughs> Merge, I don't know. The idea is to remove, but maybe in some cases can be useful. The idea also to remove print line because it's confusing with the system print line to replace by view. The channel create and close will be removed. Also channel from that we use every day is supposed to be replaced by channel of, from channel from list, for the reason that we show you in the tutorial. The next days I'm going to open a list of issues to discuss some open points, maybe like the one that we were, we were saying about the invocation multiple times, the same in process, or allow the inclusion of remote uh, libraries. There are some, some things that are need to be refined I would like to discuss with the community. <coughs> and Availability, all these features are available, available today in this Edge version. As I say, the, the model syntax is quite stable. The pipe part, maybe we need to think a bit more, but the, 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 the model syntax is quite, uh, you can use since today, in my opinion, experiment, and the, the idea is to make available in January. Yeah. Uh, process and weeks afterwards this, uh, I didn't get. Uh, so you say that uh, create channel will be deprecated. Yeah. But, so for instance in list uh, so when you have like two processes and one is optional and then you mix them, you need like to declare an empty channel, how does it be work? You know what I mean? You use chain like before that, no? Uh, let's see more in the tutorial because it's quite complicated uh, question. <laughs> Otherwise, we have no time to, to for the other presentation. Uh, okay, this is just a collection of ideas. To in conclusion, uh, yes, one one of the ideas is to have a, a configuration file module level. So more more or less what we were saying before, but it's an idea to to to, to be explored. And also to use model to define some kind of unit test. I will try to show something more during the tutorial as well. And um, yeah, this thing to move the parameter settings definition into uh, as nat native feature next flow could be a nice idea. Actually, what we are trying to do is to strengthen the integration between Tower and next flow. They are going. They are going to be two separate projects, of course. But the idea is to make complementary each other. So in conclusion, I think uh, this announcement to the, to the language are a great step forward for the, for the project. They will allow to create much more complicated pipeline in a more easy way. Uh, and uh, uh, th this ability to create models of tasks and software workflow is incredibly powerful. It allows people to create uh, reuse reusable components uh, uh, above not just for the task, but for a piece of, of, of workflow, the entire workflow that can be embedded in, in each other. So these are two, two features, including not just models, but also uh, tower, the ability to have a, a monitoring front end 
that was long awaited by the community, and finally we are. I think we are in a position to 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 to, to open the project up, be much bigger audience uh, or users. I think quite quite great. Thank you. Just few thanks to Notre Dame for supporting the project, the API of the lab. Of course, Damiana and Anna for supporting the organization of the event. Uh, and Brendan at the AWS for sponsoring also the event. Thank you. Maybe, yeah, we move to the next. And then maybe question later. <laughs>